Um, I don't know him. He denied knowing Schmuel to Kotler after offering that chicken and um, Schmuel being caught out by Kotler and then consequently beaten. Chapter 19, the key one, the climax. He keeps his word, okay, and this is what um, seals his fate in the end. He's doomed from this point on. Um, he goes searching for Bruno's father and, they, of course, they fail. So he does have a sense of loyalty. He does come through in the end. Um, you might have not really warmed to the character at the beginning. Um, certainly in these kind of conversations with Shmuel, I know he comes off um, as really quite insensitive. Um, but here, you know, he does do the right thing. Okay, Shmuel. Um, we get a sense of really how you sympathise with him here. The large eyes, the pool of caramel sweets, you know, the, the, that's kind of affectionate. Those are soft images, sweet images. Um, and, and large eyes, you think about, you know, puppy dog eyes and kitten's eyes. We're meant to feel pity for this boy. Um, and Bruno's never seen anything more pit pitiful in his life. The train journey, um, he's almost um, suffocating, and then he's separated from his family. Again, tugging on the heart string, you have to feel sympathy for Schmuel here. This is when he actually, uh, he repeats this, there aren't any good soldiers, so he's actually stressing, and he eventually he says later on that he hates soldiers, um, to his new friend, Bruno, um, and really that shows his experience on the other side of the fence. He will have been brought up through his experiences to believe that you know, people can be very soulless and harsh and uncaring, and that soldiers are the worst of the lot. It was almost as if they were all exactly the same, really. This is um, the writer's description. It's Bruno's perspective, but he's, he's looking at Schmuel. When they've got the shaved head, they've got their um, prison stripes um, uniforms on, and they look very similar, and that's obviously the moral message there. Um, they look the same, really. They are the same. They should have the same rights. As it turned out, all the things he thought might be inside the camp um, weren't. This is really um, Bruno's perspective, but it's each small's world is inside now. Notice in the square brackets there, that's where I've slightly had to change um, the quotation. Um, because in the original quotation it just said, as it turned out, all the things he thought might be there. So I have to replace that. To make it clear where, what the quote's referring to. So there's no fruit shop from vegetable shops, there's no people idling, you know, having a great time walking up and down the street, you know, the hustle and bustle of Berlin. This really powerful contrast here. Um, and he realises that what he expected to be there what is not there. The chaos that follows is obviously their deaths. Um, they, they're still holding hands. That unity, that relationship, that strong bond. That's the most emotive thing in the entire novel, obviously. Um, and that holding of hands is you know, symbolic of, of their compassion, their kindness, their friendship. Um, Kotler, in contrast, uh, very serious, um, very precise in his appearance. He wants to impress. Reminds Bruno of the bullies. So obviously something in his manner, his mannerisms, the way he acts, perhaps particularly the way he reacts with, um, he flirts with Gretel. Um, he's not a kind man, he's very mis uh, vicious, um, uncaring, incompassionate man. What happened then was both unexpected and extremely, um, sorry, was both unexpected and extremely awful, let to change that quote slightly. Um, this is the example of a mission where we don't actually see what Kotler does. Um, to Pavel, but it's obviously very aggressive, violent behaviour. This is Gretel uh, trying to explain um, what's going on. The opposite live on this side of the fence and the Jews live on that side. She doesn't even know what name to give the rest of the population. All she can understand is this opposition of the Jews, that her father and Hellis, the history teacher, have kind of the brainwashing to her believing. Okay? Um, so Bruno's father. Um, he's obviously very commanding, he gets respect from people. This is how he tries to explain. Um, remember, the Nazis referred to the Jews as vermin, as rats. So disregarding their human qualities, ignoring the fact that they are people, 
enables them to um, actually do what they did. He wants to climb the ladder. He knows when to speak up and when to keep his mouth closed. So he is um, a player in that respect. He wants to move up the ranks. That's his motivation. You can perhaps at least maybe not understand, but get a glimpse of why he does what he does, why he's able to commit such atrocious acts. Of course you have informed your superiors of your father's views. This is when he promotes Kotler because his father was a deserter and left Germany. So he would call himself a patriot um, and he sees Kotler's father as the opposite, a coward. Um, this is when he does realise that he has to send Bruno home, so there is some element of consideration and care for his children. But it's too late. This kind of parallel here is he ends up slumped, sat in almost exactly the same position as Bruno had um, every afternoon for a year. This is when he realises later that Bruno dug his way under, found his way into the camp, and he's not just disappeared. He was killed um, by his own actions. Okay, so Bruno's father killed his own son, really. And Bruno's mother, she says in chapter one, we don't have the luxury of thinking. So she doesn't have a choice in the move. She's forced out of Berlin. So in a way, she is a, a victim there. She doesn't like the Fury. She doesn't like Hitler. Um, she doesn't like the way events have gone. She'd rather things have stayed the same. She knows that war will only bring suffering. And she does her thing as the dutiful mother and goes with her husband and looks after the children. She tries to remain within that sphere, but ultimately the war affects everything. And obviously she loses more um she sorry, she loses Bruno, she suffers greatly in the end. Gretel, a little bit more on her. Um she tries to behave like a lady, she tries to kind of she likes mocking Bruno and um, trying to act all mature. Um she doesn't know though. She's as ignorant as Bruno, open mouth. She doesn't know what's out that window. She doesn't understand the camp. She returns to her dolls. That's her comfort zone. Um, the view is decidedly nicer from there. So she chooses to turn a blind eye, whereas Bruno the Explorer uh, confronts it. Perhaps that's why he's more of a heroic character. She had put maps of Europe that father had given her. So the dolls go, the posters go, and, and she uses these pins to plot the progress of the war. So she really does become um, obsessed with it, and that's Herr List's responsibility as well. He, he convinces her that Germany has suffered and been wronged, and that the war was a worthy cause. And Maria, the maid, um, always keeps her head bound. So she's very kind of diligent, very submissive, um, does what she's told as a servant, doesn't speak up. Okay, so she's not going to be the one that stops this or intervenes. Like many people, she felt she couldn't, obviously because of the threats and the risks involved. If anyone actually tried to stop this, especially from within Germany, uh, the consequences would have been uh, fatal. He has a lot of kindness in his soul, which makes me wonder. This is when in chapter 6 she's questioning how Bruno's father can behave so horrifically when, she, when he actually helped her out and her family out. Hitler. So just a quick one here. Xenophobic, he doesn't like other nationalities of the countries. Remember, he wants the Aryan race, blonde hair, blue eyed, to rule supreme. He thinks they're the supreme being. Um, he tells Gretel that she shouldn't learn French. Why, why would you want to learn French? Germany's, Germans are the master race. German, German should be the widespread, widely spoken language. Now, this quick one here. Um, Bruno and Gretel's teacher. Primarily focusing on history and geography, much to Bruno's displeasure. He enjoys imaginative things, the arts, story writing, exploring. So he wants to get him his head out of the storybooks and teach him about the great wrongs, the great wrongs that Germany suffered. That is really the punishment that the European community forced upon Germany after World War One, which really did have consequences for the German people. And they did um, suffer, so they're really trying to portray Germany here as a victim. Okay, and that the reaction in World War II was justified because of the wrongs that they suffered. Grandparents, particularly Bruno's grandmother, 
she is the objector. She was unimpressed, remember, she walks out. Okay, she's not proud of her son, um, like Bruno's grandfather. She's ashamed of him. Pavel, the servant, the Jewish servant. If commandant asks, we'll say that I cleaned up Bruno. Um, that's actually the mother speaking, Bruno's mother speaking after Pavel's cleaned up her cut. So she's trying to actually protect Pavel here because she knows that he shouldn't really have done what he did, even though it was an act of compassion. And he knew what he was doing because he was a doctor. But she knows that the commandant, i.e. Bruno's father, won't like it because Pavel is seen as vermin. Pavel is um, something, you know, something or someone not to be touched. Okay, so some key quotes for key characters. Hopefully, um, that has helped you, and you'll be ready for the exam. All right. So make sure you've got your quotations to hand. And as I said at the beginning, um, do section B uh, first of all. Okay, you've got your reading time for the newspaper article in section A. Then I'd really go straight to your planning and your quotations and begin your essay for section B, boring, sharp pajamas. Okay, good luck.